Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you'll find it helpful as we gather today from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 11, verses 20 to 24. Then he began to reproach the cities in which most of the, his deeds of power had been done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted in heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. Remembering that the word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of scripture. Today's reflection is offered by Canon Claire McLaren. Hello again. Around the north coast of the Sea of Galilee, there are three towns that we hear mentioned in our gospel reading this morning. We've got Capernaum, which still exists as a thriving town. We've got Bethsaida, which doesn't exist any longer. Archaeologists think perhaps the sea has spread northwards and flooded the area where that town was. And then a couple of miles north of Capernaum, we've got Chorazin. Two uh, fishing towns and then one farming town. Chorazin was renowned for its wheat. It's actually mentioned in the Babylonian Talmud for the quality of its wheat. It was based on south facing slopes where the fields got plenty of sunshine. These three villages were villages full of God fearing Jews, Israelites who believed that they were God's chosen people. And Jesus worked much of his ministry in that triangular geographical area and it was there that he performed many many of his miracles particularly in Capernaum. In the gospel reading today we hear him expressing enormous frustration though. Woe to you he says if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Woe to you, Capernaum, he says. If the deeds done in you had been done in Sodom, they too would have repented. So we've got these three villages very familiar to Jesus. And perhaps Jesus a bit too familiar to them in his home territory. He's already said in the Gospels, a prophet is not acknowledged in his own hometown and amongst his own people. And he's repeating something of this in the Gospel passage we hear today, isn't he? 
But let's think about the other three towns that he mentioned. What's the difference between them and Capernaum, Bethsaida and Chorazin? Well, if we've got the Sea of Galilee here with our three villages around the top of the coast, over here on the shoreline of the Mediterranean, we've got Tyre and Sidon. They're thriving fishing ports uh, with a huge um, toing and froing of people coming from all around the world. And Sodom, if we move our map up a little bit, is right down here. Doesn't exist any longer. Tyre and Sidon do, they're in Lebanon, but Sodom doesn't exist any longer. But it was thought to have been somewhere down near the Dead Sea, much further south. The thing that all these three towns have in common is that they're Gentile communities pagan communities, communities to whom the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob is just one God amongst many others that people might have chosen to worship. And yet Jesus says, if I had taken my good news to them, they would have flocked to hear it. They would have gathered round and listened intently and wanted to know how my message could transform their lives in a way that you, who already think you've got all the answers, who already think you know it all, who already think that you're chosen, that you're righteous, that everything's signed, sealed and delivered in terms of your salvation, they, they would have repented and turned to me while you have not. A sadness there, as well as a frustration, you can kind of hear in Jesus' voice, can't you? Well, that same sadness and frustration um, I heard once in the words of a colleague as he was reflecting on his work in schools with children and young people. He said what he observed was that children that um, went to Sunday school or perhaps to a church primary school in some senses were less receptive to the gospel than those who hadn't. And he used a really interesting metaphor that stayed with me ever since. He said it's almost as if they'd been inoculated against the gospel. Now, we're all being encouraged to be vaccinated um, against COVID, of course, at the moment. And the difference with a COVID vaccine is that it doesn't actually contain any of the virus. But many other inoculations do. They contain a small quantity of an infection in order to persuade our antibodies to uh, be built up in order to fight against the real infection, the whole infection, when it tries to attack us so that we don't fall seriously ill. What this colleague was trying to say was that sometimes our children and young people get um, at Sunday school and in primary school get told about Jesus. They get to know about Jesus. They, they learn the stories from the Bible. Um, they learn about the miracles that he did. They learn the facts about Jesus. But they spend all this time learning about Jesus and don't ever actually get to know Jesus get to understand how excitingly transformative having a Christian faith of one's own can be, that they don't get the opportunity to realise that becoming a Christian isn't just about a set of facts that we know in our heads, but something that changes our whole way of life. And I wonder whether in some sense this is the problem Jesus is bumping up against. Familiarity breeding contempt People thinking they know it all already and not ever coming to realise the transformative power of the Christian faith. And that's a challenge to us today, isn't it? How infectious is my faith? How infectious is your faith? Is it something that people look at and think, my word, that person's life has been transformed I want some of that. Jesus' frustration and sadness is understandable. And yet we are called to be infectious in our faith. Rather than just telling people about Jesus 
so that they know about him. Let us share Jesus so that they come to know him too. Amen. Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Our prayers begin this evening with one by Thomas Merton. Loving Father, give us the strength that waits upon you in silence and peace. Grant us the humility in which alone is rest. And deliver us from pride, which is the heaviest of burdens. Lord, have mercy. Merciful Christ, help us to accept your challenge in today's Gospel reading. May we recognise and give thanks for your deeds of power in our lives. Challenge us when we surrender to inertia or complacency. Refresh the roots of our faith. Christ, have mercy. Gracious God, show us how we can give witness to your saving grace in this noisy world. Help us to respond to your call, to discern how we might contribute to building your kingdom of justice and peace at the most local level and to be steadfast in the face of threat. Through prayer and your grace, may our eyes remain fixed on your guiding light. Lord, have mercy. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who makes saints of sinners, transform us in our inner being, that we may be faithful in our discipleship. May he strengthen us when the way is costly, that we may in turn transform the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all, this day and always. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God, this day and always. Amen. <laughs>